is Thank you, everyone. So, good afternoon for the, our colleagues from Toronto and the Americas. Good evening to the people from Europe and uh, Africa. And I guess it's a very early morning in Taipei. So, I hope some of them, some of our colleagues from Taiwan, can join us. So, my name is Jacques Dang, and I'm from the French Digital University in Economics and Management. And I will be joined by two colleagues our president, Christophe Fournier, and Deborah Arnold, who will be presenting with me. Christophe Fournier is the president of our digital university and works for the University of Montpellier in southeastern France. And Deborah is the coordinator of national and international projects in research and development. So I'll just hand off the floor to Christophe to uh, tell you some a few words about our organization and about what we do. Thank you, Jacques, so much for introducing me. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from for everyone. I'm so happy as a president of this digital university to give you a few words to introduce Onej. Um, we will first talk about uh, the uh, Université Numérique, which is, uh, Onej is specialized on economics and management, and this is a public, uh, an association of different public universities uh, with uh, different engineering and management school. And the main goal is to share some open resources and courses, but also to conduct and uh, try to develop and follow some pedagogical innovation through digital transformation. So Onej is part of a more aggregated organization, which is l'Université Numérique, which also cover uh, other open educational resources, dealing with humanities, technology, science and engineering, healthcare management and sports, and also sustainable development. Okay, this uh, operator is part of a ministry for higher education, research and innovation. And this is by that way that we receive of the, an annual grant, uh, and we are mandate, mandated to represent French higher education in several international bodies and uh, organizations dealing with open education. And among these different organizations, you have UNESCO, Open Education Global, ACDI, among others. So based on that, uh, we have several open educational resources, around 1,100 courses and resources, which are open and of course for only non-commercial use. So we have license, Creative Commons license, with uh, has attribution and non-commercial use. Uh, to ensure the quality, of the quality of our resources which are proposed, we've got scientific committee, which are reading and examining the, the resources on uh, several point of view, from a pedagogical point of view, of course, but also scientific, technical, and legal criteria. And uh, to, to create 1,100 courses, we have around 200 offers. Uh, after that, uh, we've got different partnerships. Uh, to, to, and this has increased deeply with the COVID-19 crisis, okay? First, a uh, different partner in France, like the FNEJ, which is a foundation for management education, uh, dealing with both public and uh, private business school. Uh, another network is IAE France. Uh, this is a network to, to join uh, French public business school. Business school could be either in public, in the private sector or in public university. And this is the goal of IAE. We have different of a European higher education network like Eden, EADTU, or Ellen, Ellen Network with Politecnico di Milano, Universitat de Bremen, and University of Dundee, among others. But of course, in the sector of open education, we've got different partners like Open Education Global International Council for Open and Distance Education, ICDE, UNESCO, of course, Dynamic Coalition for Open Education Resources. And we've got many agreement and uh, cooperation with, with virtual university, 
especially in uh, Africa, like Congo, Congo Brazzaville, Ivory Coast, Mali, Senegal. Okay. And after, of course, we are uh, dealing with uh, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research of this country, mainly this country, uh, French speaking country in West and Central Africa. So, this is uh, a first view about our digital university. So we'll hand off uh, the floor to Deborah. Okay, thank you very much, Jacques, and, and thank you, Christophe, for the, the introduction. Uh, yeah, so here you can see um, that uh, we're not only um, looking at the, the production and the dissemination of uh, open educational resources, uh, but we're also engaged in a series of uh, projects at national and uh, European level. Um, you can see a few examples here. Um, what we're going to do is focus uh, on the, uh, the first one because the topic today uh, is uh, uh, micro-credentials, but we're also very active in open virtual mobility, um, work around soft skills and work around quality as well. So let's take a closer look at what we're doing in the ECHO project, which is the European Credit Clearinghouse for Opening Up Education. Um, we called it the Credit Clearinghouse when we started, but we're thinking now that a more appropriate name is the Credential Clearinghouse. Uh, so this is a European Erasmus Plus project. Um, we started just over a year ago. And what we're trying to do is um, uh, facilitate the endorsement and appropriation um, of open online and flexible higher education through increasing trust in technology enabled credentials. Um, we're looking at credentials at all levels, but the, um, uh, the focus of uh, what I'm going to be talking to you about right now is the, the micro-credential level. Um, in order to do that, um, we're looking at uh, quality criteria, what should be contained in a digital credential, uh, not just from a technical point of view, but really from a usability and user point of view. What is the most relevant information for the different stakeholders, for the learners, for the institutions and for employers. Um, on the institutional recognition side, uh, we're developing uh, what we're calling a model credit recognition agreement, uh, the MCRA. We've got lots of acronyms, um, so you've got them here. Um, and this we like to call it um, a fast track um, solution uh, to helping institutions and helping learners um, get recognition of prior learning through it, for example. And we've been looking very, very closely at the different processes uh, that take place and looking at making people's lives easier We're, uh, with support for that process. Um, we've also taken a deep look at uh, the way learning opportunities are described, uh, looking at MOOC platforms, looking at institutional websites, to develop a showcase catalog of learning opportunities and uh, to try and draw out what are the most useful, um, uh, what is the most useful information? What do learners need to see um, in these descriptions before they enroll or sign up for a particular learning opportunity? Uh, we've got the whole technical side to the credentials um, and, and all this comes together in the ecosystem or the ecosystem, uh, which is going to bring all of this together, um, uh, providing services to a network of different stakeholders. So um, if we look at uh, what we've got coming up uh, next in the project, uh, next week we are launching a series of public consultations. Uh, so this is an open invitation to anybody here uh, who wants to get involved and to contribute to shaping the future of what these should look like. Uh, focusing on our first two outputs, so the information that a micro-credential should include and testing our fast-track solution. So you can drop me an email if you want to get involved. We'll be sending out personal invitations uh, or you can comment um, on the um, OE Global Connect uh, under our presentation section. Um, and, and I'll get in touch with you there. Uh, but let's now have a look at the, the bigger picture in Europe, um, because the work we're doing in ECHO fits within this, this, this wider context of the European qualifications framework. Um, and there's an awful lot of work being going on in Europe to, um, uh, to map national qualification frameworks together. Um, the European MOOC Consortium has done um, a great deal of work 
uh, in developing a common micro-credential framework so that that supports mobility um, and uh, opportunities for, for learners. Um, we've got the European Multilingual Classification of Skills and Competences, ESCO, uh, which is gradually becoming more and more known. Um, and uh, we think that, that uh, should, there should be much more take up of that. Um, and then finally, the, the, the flagship European um, initiative of Europass, uh, which is much more than um, just your uh, online CV. Uh, it's a whole, again, ecosystem of learning opportunities, work opportunities, and so on. Um, and we'll be developing digital credentials as well. Um, I'm conscious of the time, so I'm going to go on quite quickly now. Um, I don't um, promise to be an expert on what's on what's going on outside Europe, but it's interesting to look. Um, there's an example of a recent report here, which dates back um, about a year now. Uh, these were some of the things that were, were found um, in, uh, in, in the United States. Uh, interesting to see that MOOCs only provide 1% of credentials um, and that there is very little consistency in the way that um, uh, skills, competences and micro-credentials are used. Um, if we look as well, when people talk to us about micro-credentials, they say, you should look at what's going on in New Zealand. Um, so um, we can see the, the example of the, um, the New Zealand micro-credential framework here, um, where um, there's a sector-wide system of recognized micro-credentials from everything to fitting a kitchen, um, to dealing with, uh, dealing with trauma and, and lots of other um, topics. So this is something very interesting to explore. Um, we also have to be careful about some of the criticisms that are addressed to micro-credentials. Um, and I found this very, very interesting um, article, uh, the reference you've got here, um, where we've got to be careful about not reducing higher learning to this hard skills and technical competences. Um, and I think that's been very much uh, addressed in previous sessions here at OE Global. Um, when you think that uh, the, uh, the ESCO framework does contain um, descriptions of uh, values and attitudes as well as soft skills and the hard skills. I think that's something that we need to be really, really careful of paying attention to um, and think about, yeah, educating the whole person and not breaking things down into these um, uh, measurable chunks. So being aware of the criticisms, uh, yes, addressing them and be happy to engage in conversation with anybody around this. And I think that's all from me. Yes, uh, back Thank to you, you, Jack. Thank you, Deborah. I would like to introduce to the, our colleagues a new initiative that has been launched uh, early this month because it was launched on the 1st of November. Actually, the work has been, has been started one year ago. It's about an international council on badges and credentials that involves a, a very large set of stakeholders. Uh, they are very diverse in terms of geographical spread because they spread from Canada, the US and the Americas to Africa, Europe, Asia and Australia. They're also very diverse in terms of um, focus. They are organizations that are focused on international standardization, others that are professional providers, others that are education providers. And so, all of these organizations are involved in one way or another in this initiative to promote the use and uh, quality of badges and credentials. So the purpose of this uh, network of networks is to ensure that we have a holistic view of badges and credentials and how they are used for individ individuals, organizations, and society as a whole. So we're trying to promote uh, uh, a group uh, collaboration of uh, very diverse actors. And we want to demonstrate the feasibility of uh, current uh, projects in the fields of badges and credentials and how we can adapt them to various uh, co uh, geographical contexts, professional contexts, or also depending on the size of organization. So this is also a call to action because we have a number of working groups that are uh, already involving the stakeholders I've mentioned. 
one about the micro certification that connects higher education the workforce so this is about how higher education can go to the corporate world with uh, understandable and recognizable credentials and we have the move around the other way going from the corporate world to gain recognition of training activities by business schools we also have a, a group, a working group that has not started yet in the foreign language skills, but we will be involving a number of universities and companies, uh, at least in France and Africa. There is a humanitarian sector badging initiative. And uh, we have an ongoing work in the, in the Council and in German civil society to develop a large scale uh, framework for uh, badges and credentials. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be developing activities in Africa in order to promote uh, the use of credentials, to promote the use of open educational resources, and more uh, globally, promote the development and improvement of educational initiatives in Africa. You can mention the work done with uh, the EPICA project and also the work done by a group of virtual universities in French speaking Africa in collaboration with UNESCO. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and uh, would like also to draw your attention to another session that we'll be holding uh, Wednesday, slightly one hour later, which is about the work we are doing on the UNESCO uh, recommendation for OER and how we are going about international cooperation in that work. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, we, of course we are open to questions and discussions as um, uh, mentioned most notably by Deborah. Thank you very much. There's a question in the chat here. Can you say more about the work in Africa or point to it? Oh, uh, so there are two aspects to the work we are doing in Africa. Uh, the first one I mentioned uh, will be the focus of our next presentation. It's about uh, we're working with uh, the ministries and the virtual universities on at least uh, the level of three countries each time in order to see how we can promote the use of OER from a, an operational point of view. Uh, it's difficult in a given country to have face-to-face uh, uh, face the ministry, which holds a large power over a, virt a virtual university. So working with UNESCO and two other countries uh, makes sense. So this is what we're going to do and replicate, and we'll, we'll do other things also. And we're also trying to launch uh, concurrently the work for badges and credentials. I'm not necessarily the expert on that part of the work, but I can uh, point to you and give you a contact if you uh, can give me your contact email and I'll send you the information. The Ralston Archive. Done. <laughs> So I guess one of the questions raised by Deborah was, is uh, the framework, uh, the frameworks we used in uh, Europe, are they scalable? Are they too bureaucratic from a corporate or a North American centric point of view? Is that a question to me or is that a question to the audience, Shaik? <laughs> Oh, both, I would say. Perhaps, we can. <laughs> Perhaps you can start. Uh, well, I couldn't speak for the, the North American point of view because I'm not directly involved in um, actually implementing this kind of thing. Um, I can speak from the European point of view, and I think uh, we do um, sometimes find that uh, they are quite, uh, not, not bureaucratic, but there's a lot um, uh, that you need to get to grips with in the background. Um, and again, not talking about the, the, the technical point of view, uh, but really um, uh, just the whole way learning and, and higher education is, is organized and the whole recognition 
aspect as well, which is very, very complex uh, and also quite difficult to change mindsets as we're finding. Um, but uh, this is part of what, what we're doing, um, trying to be at the forefront of some of these uh, um, activities. So I think the session is coming to an end. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here. And we'll be uh, available for uh, discussion in the, if you can reply on the, our session uh, uh, posts. And we'll also have another session and also a chat session next Thursday. Thank you again, everyone. And thank you very much, Open Education Global. Thank you, thank you. very much. Thank you very much.